in this video I want to talk about collecting solar thermal and solar electrical energy. So solar thermal energy is typically collected either in air, so solar air collection, or in uh, through the process of heating up glycol or water. So that's going to be a solar thermal water collector. Um, and solar photovoltaics are going to be the electrical collection system that turns sunlight into um, electricity. There's also other ways that you can collect electricity using renewable energy. So micro hydro, um, I'll make a whole video on micro hydro. Uh, wind power um, are, are two good examples of other electrical systems. Um, personally, uh, almost always I recommend solar photovoltaic for electrical production because there's no moving parts. So whenever you have moving parts, like in a micro hydro system or a wind system, and I know because I've worked on both of them, uh, inevitably you have a huge chance that that uh, system is going to mechanically break down. The thing with photovoltaics that I absolutely love about them is that there's no moving parts. They're solid state. And so whenever you work with solid state systems, um, you're going to get a, uh, the benefit of not having to do any maintenance on it. Now, <coughs> solar photovoltaic, in my opinion, is a fantastic technology. It's still relatively new. I mean, it's been around for 30 to 50 years, um, but we're just now starting to see massive adaptation of solar, which means that the price is coming down um, and innovation is going up. And whenever those two forces start working together, um, we're able to make them more efficiently. We're able to make them with materials that are less harmful to the environment. Um, and we're definitely seeing that trend uh, in the solar photovoltaic uh, industry. There's some futurists who say that electricity is actually going to trend towards free because as all of us start to put solar photovoltaic systems onto our roofs, we'll actually generate more electricity than the world can actually use because there's so much surface area that we can clad with these solar photovoltaics. So generally, I'm a really big fan of them. Um, one of the kind of things that people say about solar photovoltaic as being kind of a drawback is that they take so much energy to produce a panel, um, which is a completely ridiculous argument. Uh, in fact, it turns out that solar panels now um, repay the manufacturing energy anywhere from three to five months, which is almost nothing. So basically, it's the only power generation, solar, wind, micro hydro, these are all examples of power generation devices that will actually generate more energy than they took to manufacture. And it doesn't really matter what the time is. Um, the reason that the whole argument against solar panels is ridiculous is that a coal plant or a gas plant or a gasoline powered car, any of these things that consume energy will never pay for themselves in an energy way like a solar photovoltaic, a micro hydro or a wind turbine. Um, or a solar thermal collector for that matter. So I'm a huge fan of renewable energy. I'm a huge fan of solar thermal and I'm a huge fan of photovoltaics. I think every one of our roofs, if appropriate, should have solar thermal and solar photovoltaic on it. There are certain situations when it makes sense to have um, wind power or micro hydro. Um, but again, before I will recommend any moving renewable energy systems, mechanical systems, I always want to explore the solid state options first because they have the, the lowest propensity towards breakage. Now for obvious reasons it's going to have impacts on air quality, it's going to have impacts on the amount of coal power that we have to generate, it's going to have impacts on the amount of natural gas we have to burn. Um, whenever we redu reduce natural gas consumption we're also reducing GHGs, we're reducing the amount of fracking that has to go on. Fracking is very um, energy intensive but it's also very water intensive. So Fracking generally uses thousands of gallons of water and it uses tons and tons of fossil fuel to run pumps to, to run that water underground at high pressure. Um, and so all of those things kind of tie into the use of natural gas and coal um, and electricity for heating water, for powering our houses, um, for running our computers and lighting them. So uh, I really think that the world is moving towards a decentralized energy future where we will start to produce our own thermal energy or capture it from the sun. We'll start to capture our own electricity. Um, and then on larger farms, acreages, and homesteads, we're actually going to be able to grow our own fuel um, in the form of biomass like wood and things like that. So um, hopefully you found that interesting. I think that you can do all of those things. You can capture, capture solar energy um, both thermally and electrically regardless of whether you believe in climate change or not. It's going to have benefits to air quality. 
it's going to decentralize the power um, supply. So it's gonna take it away from large corporations and allow us to have our own central supply. If you drive a battery powered car, right now there's a really neat opportunity. Uh, gasoline is one of the most expensive fuels out there. And so having a photovoltaic system on your house um, and a battery powered car in your garage is going to allow you to self supply for transport fuel as well. Um, one of the other trends that I'm starting to see for farms is there's actually John Deere came out with a battery powered tractor. So we're going to start to see all of the machines that had gasoline engines on them move over to battery and electric power. And so people that want to be self supplied in energy are going to absolutely move towards solar and different um, decentralized power and, and heat generation um, so that they can get off the grid, if you will. Now they may still be grid tied, but largely the energy that they consume, whether it's in farming or whether it's for their own house or for their commercial operation or for their business, can now come from self-supply with the sun. We live in an incredible time. I highly encourage you to check it out. Um, if you like this stuff, make sure you check us out on Verge Permaculture. We have lots of articles on this stuff. Um, make sure you subscribe to the channel below, hit like, it helps the video track, and I'll see you in the next video.